see who's around. Good evening. Hi everybody. Good evening. Welcome to Woody. Hi Susie, how are you? Hi Aline, how are you? Hi Aggie. Hello everybody. How are we doing? What are we drinking? I have got myself an extra fiery ginger beer. Extra fiery because I'm extra fiery. And I've poured it into a glass because I'm being fancy. Normally I'd just have it straight out of the can, I'm being honest. Hi Kirsten, hi Daniela. Would you believe it? We're finally here. <laughs> oh, Susie. Hi, Judy. Hi, Deborah. Hello, everybody. 42 people already. Maddie's here. Hi, Maddie. Hi, Dave. I hope you've all got your boxes. I have mine. Why, thank you, Hester. I do love this shirt. It's very, very fancy. It's from Levi's. Uh, hi, Timmy. Hello, thanks for joining. Susie's on the red wine. Good girl, good Susie. Sarah's on the vodka. Brilliant, it's a Thursday. Vodka for Thursday, that works. Hi, Nicola. Oh, I'm so excited to see you all. It feels like it's been a long time since our last one, since we did Fruity. It feels like forever. It's been a long time. Hi, Christabel. How's Pugsley, my son, is asking? He is having a sleep on the other side of the room. I would see if I could get him here. I can see if I can get Pugsley. Would you like to see Pugsley? Would you like to see Pugsley? I will see if I can get Pugsley. Nigel, can you bring Pugsley over to me, please? Yeah. I'm not going to get Pugsley myself, obviously. <laughs> Nigel is reluctantly getting up on the other side of the room. I don't know if Nick has a matching shirt, but I feel like he should have one. Um, hi, George. Hi, Marie. Hey, Puggo. Oh, Buggy. Oh, here's Pugsley. Say hello to everybody, Pugsley. Say hello. He's just looking back at Nigel going, why? Why am I not with you? You're my favourite. You right, buddy? Say everyone to Pugsley. Wave at everybody, Pugsley. Hello, everybody. He's gonna go now because he doesn't want to sit with me. Hi, Gavin. Hi, Laura. That's Pugsy done now. He's made his appearance. He will be charging us an appearance fee. Right, 68 people. How's everybody doing? Have we got drinks? Have we got boxes? Have we got wood? Oh, this is gonna be insufferable. I'm so sorry. Yes, yeah, Susie, Nigel is the bringer of Pugsley. He will bring Pugsley to me when I ask. He's a good husband like that. Brilliant. Nearly 70 people. This is brilliant. I think everyone's a bit excited for Woody. I know I am. Because I think there's going to be some surprises in this box. I think there are. Hi, Dory. It's not fume chat. Here we go. No. We do need a jingle. Maybe we need to do an essential sense jingle. I'll run that by Chelsea and Karen, see what they think. What fragrance is Pugsley wearing? He's wearing Eau de Pug, which is actually not that nice of a, a smell. I can, I can tell you that. Um, hi, Maria. Hi, the one and only Lisa Justice. Uh, hi, Sean. Yes, he's very lean, little pug. We do like to keep him on the lean side because uh, they can have lots of problems if they get a bit chubby. Um, Hi, Chels. How are you? It's been about approximately 24 hours since I last saw you, but hello. Um, Prosecco. Lovely. Deborah on the Prosecco. Good. Laura's got wood in her box. Good. Sometimes it's best to keep it in the box, you know, until everybody's happy for you to bring it out. Always excited for Woody. I think, I feel like if we get all the Enya window out now, we can all behave like adults, maybe. I feel like we need a theme tune, Rakesh. I'm, I'm going to put you on that. I'm hoping Rakesh can be the one that will write and sing the theme tune. 
just pushing it out there. Um, keen for the jingle, good. Ellie says it's the best box so far. Fascinating. I really, it's really interesting because when we send the boxes out, we have no idea how you're all going to react to it. And it's always a surprise. Um, it's always, always a surprise. So lovely to see that you're all loving this one. This one seems really popular. Louise's dog is called Woody. Just thought you'd throw that in. Brilliant. I mean, what kind of dog, Louise? I want to know. I want to know. Tell me about your dog. Hello, Louise. Other Louise. Joanne, sorry I'm late, couldn't find you. You're here, that's fine. I haven't even started yet. This is just the 40 to 45 minute preamble of me saying Woody a lot. <laughs> oh dear. We're at I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna start once we get to 90 because we're at 87. Yes, Hester, get your endo out now. <laughs> oh no, what have we created? What have we created? This is good. Okay, best since Sheepra. Mm, I, yeah, what was my favourite box? I think Sheepra was my favourite box, actually, so far. I think we've got some exciting boxes coming up. An oaked red Rioja. Ellie, how fancy of you. Uh, Gavin loves all of them. Could, bank well, could bankrupt me if there's any amouage. Hmm. Okay, interesting. Just apologies in advance, Gavin. Not saying anything. Uh, hopefully no technical issues, Larissa. Yes, indeed. I think we were okay on the last one, but the one before, we did have some connection issues, which was a bit annoying. But there we go. We've hit 90. We're at 91. Brilliant. I'm very excited. I'm very excited. Great. Brilliant. Yeah, next month's new launches is going to be epic. I know what's in the box, obviously. It would be silly if I didn't. And I'm really excited. Lynn, you purchased two from the Sheepra box. Which ones did you buy, Lynn? Let me guess, let me guess. Did you go for Interlude Woman, maybe? And I want to either say Nomad or Narciso. One of those two. Tell me what you bought. Ooh, Susie says this might battle for her favourite box next to Sheepra. Denise is a newbie. We welcome newbies here. Good, welcome newbies. Maddie needs to be with friends. We are all friends here. We are the best kind of friends because we're all perfume friends, which is the best because we are friends and we smell good. Oh, did I miss that the dog was a Border Terrier? Lovely, gorgeous. I've got a feeling B is Bendy and obviously my fave. Sorry, Susie. I'm not confirming nor denying nothing right now. I will wait. Okay, I'm gonna start now because we're at 93 people and I said we'd start at 90. And then I carried on. Ah, La Pontaire, Lynn got. Interesting. George got one from the Sheepra box. I'm assuming, George, that was the Clarins, right? That you bought. What does Amouage mean? Amouage is a Omani fragrance brand that we sell on Essential, that we stock at Essential, but we also have featured in two of the boxes. We featured them in Fruity and we featured them in Sheepra. Hi, Amanda from We Wear Perfume. Let's see. Okay, I love that we're already guessing already. Everyone, everyone's going, I, I think the one I love is going to be the most expensive. Well, you never know. We love to put a mixture of price points in the box. Perfume people are the best. Susie, you are correct. That is a fact. Actual facts. Amanda th thought the green box was her favourite, but this is a good second. Okay, good. I like green, but then green is like my favourite thing. Now I've kept on talking. I want to get to 100 now because we're at 96. I'm just going to wait until we get to 100. And then I promise I'll stop. Hi, Susan. It's not fair that we already know what's in the box. Yeah, I know. Um, Crystal, don't worry. You, you're, you're, le you're late, yes, but absolutely I have not started yet because, you know, it's me and it's 10 past eight and I haven't said a word about anything. Okay, I'm waiting until we get to 100. I just want to get everybody, you know, warmed up, ready for the woodiness. La Ponte is bloody amazing, I agree, Susie. I just want to wear long pantera and go out and just wear like furs, fake obviously, and just like hit the town. I want to go out in Paris and just like wear furs and wear la pantera and just be fabulous for the day. What was the Clarins one? Uh, Laura, that was in the Sheepra box. We did uh, Odina Mosante. Crystal, you have not missed anything. I haven't even started telling anybody anything yet. We're waiting till we get to 100, we're two people away. And then we're gonna get started. All that you've missed is Pugsley made a cameo. We said the word wood a lot. 
Um, and we've just been talking about the boxes, actually, about what people love and what they've already bought from the boxes, which is really exciting. Um, and also people have complimented me on my shirt. So if you want to join in on that and compliment me also on my shirt, then I'm not going to stop you. Sarah, you've got pyjamas in my, in my shirt material. I hope you're wearing them. I'll be very upset if you're not. Oh, Sophie's only disliked one from this box so far. Oh, interesting. I bet I can guess which one. Okay, I'm going to get started because we're at 97 now and we just went down to 96. So I don't think we're going to quite get to the 100. So I'm just going to start. Hello, everybody. Thank you very much for joining. Um, if this is your first time, hello, pull up a seat. Um, everybody here is very friendly. Pour yourself a drink. Um, we are here to do the first reveal of the box that is Woody, the Woody box. And that's our current box that's on sale. Uh, not on sale now, but it's available now that you're all sniffing. Um, and we're going to reveal A to D in that box today. Um, and it's very exciting. And Essential Sense is this trial that we've been doing since um, the beginning of uh, the year. I've just seen that we're 100. Amazing. There's 100 people watching. The power we have. Oh, my God. I'm so excited. Um, <laughs> 99 perfect people in a spritz ain't one. Susie, I applaud you. I applaud you. Um, so we've done this trial since January um, and it's been a really exciting way to bring fragrance to people in their own homes. Essential Sense is all about allowing people to try fragrances away from any distraction. So whether that be away from the bottles, the brands, the names, the notes, um, the fragrance uh, kind of uh, style, anything like that, just to kind of keep you focused on what you're smelling and to do that in a safe environment where you can talk about it and say what you want about it. That's what this is about. We have a, a, a really strong fragrance heritage at Essential. We've stocked fragrances ever since the beginning. And we've curated a really fine selection of brands from mainstream brands to um, wonderful kind of niche, indie, weird, wonderful luxury brands as well. Um, so it's all about education. It's all about exploring the fragrance families and having fun with it. So how will the live run? The live will last approximately 30 minutes. If you're new, that is a complete lie. I will be still talking in about an hour. It will be about an hour, okay? It's not gonna be 30 minutes, it's gonna be an hour. Um, we're gonna talk through the fragrances. I'll share some of the comments. I'll tell you why I've picked the fragrance, how it's important as a woody scent, and then we will reveal what it is and talk about it a little bit more, and then we will move on. And that's how it works. Um, there's no right or wrong. You can describe the fragrance in any way you want. Whatever you smell is right. We all have very different ways of um, perceiving fragrance. We all have different ways of describing it. We've all lived very different lives and we all have picked up lots of different olfactory associations on the way. So no two people's impression of a fragrance is going to be the same. Um, it does not matter if you say, I smell lavender in this and there is not a stitch of lavender in the fragrance. If you smell it, it's there and it's really important. So I don't want anybody to be... Um, afraid to say what they think because no one's going to come down on you with a list of notes and go I'm very sorry sir but that is not in the list of notes and you must leave because that's not going to happen we love any discussion okay so please keep interacting in the group there has been so much interaction with this box it's been really wonderful to see lots of discussions lots of selfies lots of people talking about their impressions it's been wonderful um, and keep doing that because that's really, really great. And we'll hopefully you can keep doing that over the coming weeks before the next live uh, towards the end of May because that's the month we're in. I believe we are in May. So also, as always, I have five of June's boxes to give away. So throughout the live, I will be giving away five boxes of next month's box, which is the June new box. Um, and we'll be giving those away to the best comments um, or the best questions or just things that make me laugh probably. Um, so I might just call out and say, you've won a box. Um, if you've already bought next month's box, that's fine. You can gift this box to somebody else. Um, Essential will just take your name and they will get in touch with you afterwards. So um, Chelsea, who is, uh, what, as, who is the little Essential Circle in the chat tonight, will be very good at reminding me how many boxes I've got left and how many I've given away because I can get a bit carried away. And as uh, Chelsea is saying, please send Essential a DM if you win a box to claim your prize. So just message them on Facebook. Okay. That's all the, the stuff out of the way. So have you got your boxes, most importantly? Have you got your tester strips? Have you got your drink? Have you got your pug? Are you ready? Good, let's go. I'm gonna have a sip of my drink, then we're gonna get started. Okie dokie. 
So, woody fragrances. What is a woody fragrance? Well, this is nice and easy. This isn't like um, your Chypre or your Fougere um, or uh, those fragrance families. The name, the clue is in the name. Um, these are fragrances that boast wood notes. So they celebrate the beauty found within woods. And there are lots of woods in the world that have uh, an oil uh, that, they can, that can be extracted from them or a scent that can be extracted from them and used in perfume. So this includes things like notes like cedarwood or sandalwood or cypress and pine, but also it expands and includes things like oud as well, which I'm sure is a note that you're you're really familiar with. And I think oud at this point probably arguably is kind of a separate fragrant family, even though it's not considered such. I think it is because it's so vast and so different. Um, so I think oud is part of is part of woody, absolutely, it's a woody note. But woody can also include things like vetiver and patchouli. So it's not just about wood notes, it's other kind of earth-bound planty notes, I suppose, that um, are considered as woody. And because of this, there is a little bit of overlap between the woody and the sheepra uh, families, but the sheepra tend to have a floral aspect that you don't normally see in wood fragrances. So there is some kind of overlap there. Now, one of the interesting comments we've seen about this box um, from, from everyone is that, oh, it's quite masculine. Um, and I think that's because woody notes are seen as typically masculine. And that's true. They're used a lot in masculine fragrances. So that's not in itself is not wrong. Um, but actually, woody notes are used quite widely across perfumery. And you'll find lots of feminine fragrances will have woody notes in them. Um, they just may not be the prominent feature. They may be the supporting act. So in this box, we've tried to show you a real mixture of those things. So you do, in this box, have some masculine fragrances. Um, you do have some feminine fragrances and do have some unisex fragrances. Now, the caveat that goes with me saying that is fragrance doesn't really have a gender. So when I say it's masculine, it's feminine, it's unisex, I just simply mean it's marketed as such. And I'm a believer that you can wear what you like, whether it's got, you know, whether it's got man or, or woman on the label, just wear what you want, wear what you feel comfortable with. But we do have to recognise that there are certain cultural associations with scent and that there are things that have been typically worn by men and typically worn by women. And that does kind of give them a masculinity and a femininity. It's a very complex thing. But there you go. That's what I mean when I say that. Some very famous feminines are woodies. And we've actually got one in the box, which we will come to later. For me, they are perfumes of texture. Woody fragrances... Um, they capture the smooth uh, feel of woods, but also the creamy, the rugged and the kind of rich textures of wood. They can feel very, very natural. You can smell a fragrance and feel like a woody fragrance and feel like you're in the middle of a, um, a pine forest. Um, or they can smell very abstract. And actually, we think we've got a few in the box that are a little bit more abstract. Um, and it's a genre that I used to hate, I'll be honest. I never used to like woody fragrances. I was all about florals. Um, and kind of statement fragrances. And because I think woody fragrances tend to be a little bit more subtle, a little bit more nuanced and quiet, I never really paid them any attention. Now, some of my favorite fragrances are woody. And one of my favorite, most worn fragrances is actually in this box. So there you go. That's a little bit overview of woody. Are you all still there? I can see you in the comments. Um, let's have a look. I'm just gonna scroll back. Susie says, some people do still feel more comfortable shopping for masculine or feminine fragrances too, and that's also fine. I think so. And I suppose it has its uses in terms of helping people know what they want. You know, there are so much perfume out there. It does help people kind of guide them. We're going to smash the gender binary tonight, Rebecca. Absolutely agree. Uh, Crystal says, I've noticed woody suits smokers unlike fruity. Interesting. That's really interesting, actually. Uh, Rachel says, the hubs and I are having competition as to who gets the most right. Brilliant. Keep us up to date on how you go. Um, okay, I'm gonna scroll back down now. Sorry, I'm just getting distracted by the comments. Um, so moving on. Right, brilliant. What would you say turns you on to wood? <laughs> Hester, what a question. Um, I think there, I just think, there, there, I think actually fragrance B was the one that really helped me appreciate woody fragrances. So we will come to that. So this is a lot of my favorites are considered masculine. Yeah, it's a really interesting thing, the whole the whole gender divide in perfumery, because it's all it's all marketing, really, because fragrances, they they all they smell different on everybody to an extent, and they they we all have very different impressions of what smells good to us. So I just say wear what you want, don't worry about the label. Claire says she resents buying masculine because I enjoy pretty packaging. Yeah, and I suppose that's why niche is so good, because the packaging tends to be a bit more streamlined, doesn't it? And, and less 
one or the other. Gavin says, if you like a fragrance and wear it regardless, yep. Sophie says she leans more to masculine fragrances as well. Interesting, okay. Brilliant, shall we move on to fragrance A? Shall we? Let's do that. So we've just done a little bit of a um, uh, overview of wood. Now we're going to move on. Nafia says she loves a pencil shaving wood. I love a pencil shaving wood as well. Okay, fragrance A. What do we think of fragrance A? Should we get that out and give that a spritz? Here we go, fragrance A, we're kicking off. We're kicking off. That's a really interesting comment, comment Amanda. So Amanda's saying it should really be about self-identity with fragrance. Choosing a scent that makes you feel yourself rather than by gender. I agree. And I think it's a lot the same with clothing as well, isn't it? It's, you know, what do you identify with as your style? Let's go for A. Who's a fan of A? I'm going to generously spritz this one. Let's go. So, A. Debbie says she loves it. Sarah says Calvin Klein vibes. I get that. That's an interesting point, yeah, Laura, about the Gutal fragrances. Some of them come in both a ma more masculine bottle and a more feminine bottle. I think that's a bit strange, but they do do that. Kasha says bold. Rachel says A for me. Bronwyn says she needs to buy for her boyfriend. Brilliant. Nafia says beautiful, bright opening, very invigorating. Smells very clean yet deep and masculine, yeah. There is a cleanliness to it. Interesting, Susie. So you've got celery notes and pepperiness for it. Yeah, that's interesting. Louise seems to like A. She said A, 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 and a smiley face with the hearts for eyes. Gavin says very fresh for Woody. Yes, I think that's a good point. It's a very fresh for a woody fragrance. So why did I pick A? Well, I picked A because I think it's what most people would expect a woody fragrance to smell like. It's a pretty standard masculine woody scent. So it has a sense of freshness, but an under underlying warmth of wood. And I think it's just a very well executed example of a modern masculine woody fragrance. Um, so I wanted to start with this so that we can see how the others in the box expand our perceptions of what woody can be by starting kind of in the neutral space of this is what we recognise as a fresh, woody, masculine. We can then move on and expand on it. Aline says, the dry down reminds me of my granddad's aftershave. George says, it's a pleasant shower gel freshie. It doesn't do much for him. Sarah says, like Tuscany in the autumn. Louis says, a bit soapy. Michelle says, good on her husband. A great gift. It's not offensive. It's pleasing. Yep. It reminds me of Chanel Allure Sport, but my guess is D&G Light Blue. Interesting. Well, we had a lot of thoughts on this one in the comments. So in the group, Melissa said she felt like it was a men's sport scent. Um, Louise said she just wanted to spray it all over her man, snuggle up and spend a few hours breathing that boy in. Okay, you do you, Louise. Um, Pip said it smelled traditionally masculine at first and that there's a herby freshness to it. It does definitely have that aromatic feel. And then Kirsten described it as a sherbet, zingy and slightly fruity. And Michelle said it was simple and preppy. I agree with all of that. It's kind of very easy. It's a fresh citrus up top. It's very clear. It's transparent. It's kind of aquatic, I think. Then you've got these nice herbal aromatic vibes there. And then also like this warmth of sort of dark grains of wood. And it very much feels to me like wood covered in water. So it's, it's not really a specific wood. It's the feeling of dark woods that are kind of wet. So maybe a driftwood. Maybe that's what it's what we're going on. Oh, it is a clue. Yes, it's a very good clue. It's an essential sense icon. This one may have had a little turn around the block before, I believe. This one. Chelsea can uh, tell me if I'm wrong here. Um, you make your other half wear Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit is pretty damn sexy, let's be real. Very classic with a salty breeze. Feels like a modern masking, clean, sweet and woody. Unfortunately, brings back too many memories of bad dates. I do think it's traffic, but it smells like other men to me rather than something my man would wear. Mia, I would like to give you a box because I'm sad that you've been on bad dates. So Mia, well done, you've won a box because of your bad dates. Please do a uh, DM Essential to claim your prize. Can't have people having bad dates. That's not allowed. We're not allowed to do that. I feel bad. George gets a sweet orange note. Um, what did I ask Chelsea? Oh yes, am I right in saying that this one has had a turn around the essential sense, essential sense block before? I believe it has. I think it has. Okay. 
are we ready for the reveal? I just very subtly grabbed the bottle without pulling it in front of the camera, which I'm really, really pleased with. Okay, so this fragrance has got a very woody name. The name is very wood. Ready? So the reveal of A, it is, and it has been around the block again, is Eau de Issy Pour Homme Wood and Wood, Eau de Parfum Intense. Um, it's wood and wood. It's not just wood. It is wood and wood. Double wood. Wood squared. Wood to the power of two. Um, this came out in 2019. Um, it is a very lovely take on the Eau de Issy Pour Homme, which is obviously the fresh aquaticness I think that we're getting here but it's got this more rich woody base and it uses sandal essence and Virginia cedar essence, as well as some patchouli as well, which is a woody note to create that. So this one's really lovely. I It's 43 pounds for 50 mils Eau de Parfum. I just think it's a thoroughly modern woody masculine and it has that easy freshness we often see in masculine perfumery. It's definitely very sporty um, and it shows that woody doesn't have to mean dense, heavy, and intense. It can actually mean transparent and clean and fresh and a little bit aquatic. Uh, Maria is asking me, is it too much wood? Can you have too much wood, Maria? That's my question back to you. I don't think we can. Dave says, Woody Woodpecker. Susie says, Edward Wood, 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 Where, Wood and Wood. Susie, Susie, Susie. Susie, I have to give you a box. I have to give you a box, you understand. I don't have a choice. That comment has to have a box. Susie, well done, you've won a box because Edward Woodward would wear wood and wood. He would. He would wear it, wouldn't he? He would wear wood and wood, wouldn't he? Oh God, this is insane. Okay, well done, Susie. DM Essential. You know the drill. You know the drill. Um, George says it smells very late 90s, early 2000s. Yeah, I guess it's a bit of an, you know, if NSYNC was a fragrance, it would be this, right? And nobody, nobody come for NSYNC in the comments because I will be upset. Um, I'm Stan Lance Bass for life. Okay, Eau d'Issy Pour Homme, wooden wood, a thoroughly modern masculine that's fresh, transparent, and I think the sense that I'm getting is you're all gonna be buying it for your boyfriends and husbands. That's the impression I'm getting. And it has a lovely bottle with a kind of wood effect lid. It's kind of woody, there you go. There you go. Never too much wood. Yeah, Laura, Susie did deserve a comment for a box for the 99 comment too. It's kind of like a lifetime achievement award. I think Susie's won this evening with that box because it's just the effort being put in is brilliant. The thing is, as I start to give out boxes, you all start getting very clever with the comments. I do notice that. I do notice it. I do. And I like it. Susie says she would, W double O D, be quite happy if a boyfriend wore this. Why don't I say that's brilliant? Um, right, that was A. My question to you now is A was a holiday destination. Get my words out. I'm not even drinking alcohol. I'm drinking ginger beer and it's not got beer in it. It's just ginger, ginger fizz. Um, if fragrance A was a holiday destination, where would it be? <laughs> Christabel's going to buy this for her husband and shout at him, wear this all day, every day. Yes, good plan. He shall, he shall. So if fragrance A was a holiday destination, where would it be? Bali, interesting. Crete. Two places I've not been to, but I would like to go. Valencia. I've not been there either. Magaluf, I've not been there either, no. Ibiza or wherever the young men go these days. I have no idea where they go. Now, if you're really gonna make me guess the flag, are we saying Australia? Is that Australia? Australia, right, Mafia? Boreham Wood. It could be Boreham Wood. I, I feel sad if that's, an, that's a holiday destination. Italy, Bali, Cambodia. Okay, we're getting very, very exotic. We've got all the way to Bali from Boreham Wood. Glamping in the woods, Sue. Yes, indeed. Brilliant. Okay, wonderful. Forest of Dean. Brilliant. Okay, shall we move on to B? Who's ready for B? 
let's move on. I'm ready for B. What do we think of B? What do we think of B? We spray. Okay, we're doing B now. Thanks, Nafia. Yeah, I'm, I'm great with flags, obviously. I was going to guess that 100%. To be. Yes, I'm guessing I'm guessing that we're all doing woods now because we're doing Forest of Dean, Boreham Wood, Hollywood. Yeah, I get it. I get it, because it's the woody box. I get it. Nafi says beaches, surfers, boys, wearing thongs, not the underwear. Okay, so the sur surfer boys aren't in the thongs, Nafia. Is that what you're saying? They're wearing the sand like the flip-flops. I'm not judging, I'm just asking. Susie says, B is bloody gorgeous and I need it. Mm -hmm. B is bloody gorgeous and I have it. Mwahaha. I love this fragrance so damn much. Pip loves B. Judas loves B. Lynn almost loves B. Why do you almost love it? Sarah says, Kieran NYC. I know the fragrance you're thinking of, Sarah, and it's the same perfumer. Interesting. Very nice, but no longevity. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. So I included B because it showcases one of the most well-used wood notes, and that is sandalwood. Sandalwood is a material that can be rich and spicy, but it can also be very creamy. It has a strong texture and a rich odor, and it's very like kind of locality specific. So actually, um, the sandalwood that's used in perfumery will really, really vary in odor profile dependent on where it's from. So, you know, historically we use a lot of Mysore sandalwood from India, but that's now protected. So your vintage Samsara from Gerland from the 80s will have had real Mysore sandalwood in it, which would have given it that kind of rich, heavy, creamy woodiness, but they don't, you can't use that now because it's a protected species. So a lot of the sandalwood used now is kind of Australian or New Caledonian. So it really changes depending on where, where we use it. There's also a lot of very nifty synthetic materials used to amplify sandalwood effects. There's one called Javanol, which is kind of a very fresh, almost metallic kind of uh, kind of uh, feel of sandalwood. It's a little bit creamy, but it's also got this freshness to it. Um, and it's, um, yeah, it's a wonderful material. So different, different localities smell different, and sandalwood is really, really beautiful. So recently we've seen a massive trend for very fresh, airy, creamy sandalwood fragrances. Um, scents like, and I'm sure none of you will have heard of this, but there's a fragrance called Santal 33 by Lalabo. Um, let me talk about Santal 33 for a second. The amount of people that I have spoken to who go to me and say, oh, I found this amazing perfume, but nobody's ever heard of it. It's called Santal 3 by Lalabo. So many people have had that conversation with me now that when people go, oh, I found this wonderful fragrance, no one's ever heard of it. I'm like, it's Santal 33 by Lalabo, isn't it? Um, the whole of Soho reeks of Santal 33. It's part of that like trifecta of Portrait of a Lady, Baccarat Rouge 540, and Santal 33. Those are the three fragrances people wear. Um, you're not special, ma'am, if you're wearing Santal 33. I'm sorry. Everybody wears it. Everybody knows it. Um, anyway, Santal 33 is, is a novel and interesting fragrance because it really amplifies this fresh mineral uh, facet of sandalwood. Um, so B is kind of very much in that same vein but I think it's a better example of that fresh, creamy, beige type of sandalwood. It's it's a wonderfully mineral, wonderful, uh, wonderfully fresh, gorgeous. And I think it's the best example, better than the Lalabo. Yes, Mia, along with Baccarat Rouge. I love Baccarat Rouge. I went to the launch of Baccarat Rouge. I think it's a modern masterpiece. I cannot wear it now because everybody wears it. They ruined it. Everybody ruined it. Right. Mm, Santal Royal, let's see, let's see some guesses. George says modern sandalwood, leathery saffron and fresh cardamom. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wondering if it's Santal Royal. Interesting, I love your guesses. Excuse me, ma'am, but you cannot wear Santal 33 in here. This is better. Um, B says, uh, George says it's bloody good. It's woody and nutty, pun not intended. Yeah, you meant that pun, George, you meant that pun. So Selena described this in the group as being like sitting in a leather chair, surrounded by oud and maybe a little bit of licorice, drinking a cocktail. Jordan described it as smoky, dark, masculine, and slightly leathery. He said he uh, great for an evening and cool weather. People pick, picking up on kind of a leather vibe. Um, Claire called it minimalistic. Lucy called it rich and said it smelled of wood polish. 
Charlotte said it was a hot day walking through a market filled with spices, that it was very aromatic and spicy. Um, and then it had a hint of tea tree oil and a botanical green finish. And Aline said it reminded her of the inside of a woody jewelry box that she once bought in Egypt. Beautiful, wonderful descriptions on this fragrance. Um, and I've just seen one, Susie says it's sexy skin, it's got a sheerness about it. Um, that, that it's fresh. There's lots of interesting things about this one. So it's a very supple, creamy sandalwood. It's very beige in tone. It's cool, it's fresh, it's mineral. There's a hint of saffron in there to give it spice. Saffron is normally quite a strong material, but obviously in perfumery, they cannot actually use real saffron. They have to use synthetics because it's uh, restricted because of its allergens. So actual real saffron isn't used. It's suede-like, it's leathery. It's a very silky veil of a sandalwood. It's airy. It starts cool, but it warms up on the skin. It feels like a second skin. It's really, really beautiful. Do you want to know what it is? Amanda's saying suede rather than leather. Completely, completely agree. Suede-like and leathery, but yeah, probably leans more suede. Something slightly medicinal, yeah. Gin and tonic, I think there's a freshness, absolutely. Is, is it a D-squared? Oh, I don't know. Well, I do know, but it's, is it? I don't know. I love that description of a wooden jewelry box too. That was Aline who, who said that. It was a really lovely, actually, if you can find that on the group, I've just kind of summarized that, but Aline went into a bit more detail. Debbie gets a pencil smell. Okay, should we find out what it is? Again, I'm going to do my very subtle, try not to show the bottle. Okay, so this fragrance is, are you gonna, you're not gonna be surprised. It's from Miller Harris, Thomas's favorite brand. Um, this is Po Santal. It has a sort of beigey pink colored bottle. It doesn't show up very well in this light. This came out in 2018 and it was by the perfumer Mathieu Nadan, who we have talked about previously. He's done uh, other fragrances for, for Miller Harris. He is a genius. Um, and this was released as part of a duo of fragrances in 2018. The other one was called Powdered Veil, which is also very lovely, but that's more of a kind of uh, an amber. Um, for me, it's become the thing that I wear when I don't know what to wear or I just want something calming to wear. There is something so smooth and lovely about this fragrance. Um, it's £85 for a 50ml Eau de Parfum. There's a serenity to this fragrance. It's so soft, it's so smooth. It's like a hug. It's like a hug or a cool fabric. Um, it's just wonderful. This is my second bottle. And you've seen how much perfume I have. If I use a full bottle, you know I love it. Yes, Louise, you called it. You knew it would be Miller Harris. It says Po Santal, which is like sand, sandalwood skin, I think is, I guess, the translation. This is so good. This is just the most beautiful fragrance. Obsessed. Obsessed. It had to go in the box. Had to. There's got to be at least one Miller Harris in the box, right? There's not in every box. I'll tell you that now. Lisa Justice, why are they all so amazing? I don't know. I don't know, Lisa, but I agree with you. They're amazing. They just do. I think what Miller Harris does so well is they do interesting fragrances of a really high quality that are slightly different to what you would buy in the mainstream, but the quality is just so strong. So actually, the, the key thing is that they're wearable, and I just think that that's why I love them. Because I love all my weird and wonderful, but do I wear my Miller Harris more than anything else? Absolutely, I do. Of course it's Miller Harris. Nia says, well, I love Etui Noir. Yes, I love Etui Noir from uh, Mathieu Nardin and Miller Harris. It's one of my favourites. And I don't like leather, but I love that fragrance. Alison says, it's the second Miller Harris she likes. Have to get saving it again. What did Amanda say? Did I just see something from Amanda? Did I? No, I think I missed it. Sorry, Amanda, I think I missed your comment. Um, more masculine version of New by YSL. Yeah, I guess so. Powdered Veil, actually, the... Uh, kind of accompanying fragrance this reminds me a little bit of new uh, Miller Harris collection is growing yes mine is out of control I'll be honest I added Lafoy to my collection from the green box the other day I had to top up on that it's just going insane is Miller Harris my fave brand Joel that's a really good question it's one of my fave brands definitely one of my favorites it just feels very realistic I agree well it's exactly Susan you you can't all be wearing post Santal now no one's allowed to buy it I'm joking, you can buy it if you want. Is it male or female? Um, Lynn, and most of the stuff in the Miller Harris collection is not gendered, so you could absolutely wear this, it's feminine or masculine, it's whatever you want it to be. I just love it. I love it, Tweenar too, Kirsten, I love it, brilliant. 
wear it all the time. Nafi's just bought Sublime Blossom and love it. The newer Gem Miller Harris fragrance are great. Yeah. Do they do a discovery set? They don't, I don't think. They used to do kind of a masculine and a female discovery set of kind of their 10 mils or 14 mils, but I don't know if they do now. I don't know if they do. Okay, so that's Poe Santal, Miller Harris, lovely fresh mineral sandalwood, 85 pounds for 50 mil Eau de Parfum. They do also do 100 mil, which is this size. Um, brilliant. George was thinking either this or Le Cède would be in the box. Yes, yeah, so they do another woody fragrance called Le Cède. I would, it was a, it was a toss up between these two because I couldn't put both in. Um, but yes, I love Le Cède too. Right, shall we do C? Shall we do C? What's my top favourite brand? Oh, Crystal, it's such a difficult question. Um, I think the best perfume brand you can buy is Frederick Mal, probably. That's my favourite. But then I also like Mugler, I like Hermes, I like Miller Harris, I like Chanel, I like... I don't know, so many. Just so many. I just love perfume. Okay, ready. Should we do C? No, I've got a question for you. Sorry, I'm losing I'm going losing track. If fragrance B was a material, what material would it be? Fragrance B. Huh. If fragrance B was a material, what material would fragrance B be? Before we move on to C. Nigel's giving me side eye like I'm an idiot. So it could be a material like a fabric or it could be an, kind of another material, I don't know. I'll just wait patiently. Susie's wearing a Frederick Mal today. Well done, Susie. Congrats to you. Big fan of that. It's a big mood, big vibe. Susie's saying suede for fragrance B. Maria says a beige fluffy cushion. Uh, Susan says a cashmere wrap on a frosty evening. Indeed, I like that. Teresa agrees and says yes to cashmere. Amanda says suede, super soft and lightly brushed, as suede should be. Um, yep, I think I've opened the floodgates on C. I think, it's, I think I'm just gonna have to do C, okay. Because people are talking about C. So let's talk about C in our lovely green, green bottle. There we go. It's very green. I'm not going to very uh, liberally spray this one because it is quite strong. Battered leather. Ooh, interesting. Nikki says, I'm watched for my badass days and post Santa for skin sense. Yeah, I like that. Right, let's just not over egg the C because our room's going to smell a bit. Let's do C then. What do we think of C and its bright green juice? Or is it blue? Who knows? For me, it's green. Amy says, C smells like a smoker has just finished a cigarette and then shoved an extra strong minute in to try and mask the scent. That is very specific. Amy, have a box. I think that's such a vivid description. You've won a box. Please DM Essential. You know the deal. Okay. It looks like absinthe. George said it was one of the most difficult ones to wear in the box, I think. It's the most intriguing and probably the most difficult. Lots of people mentioning tobacco. Louise says it smells green. I've had germaline meets Vicks Vapor Rub. Interesting. Aftershave vibes, yep. Very piney and minty, indeed. So, do you remember right at the beginning when I said that the Woody family also covers fragrances with prominent notes of vetiver and patchouli? Well, this is one of them. It's an aromatic classic masculine fragrance blending leather with wood and tobacco with notes of vetiver and patchouli. It's quite handsome, I think. It has a little bit of a sporting heritage. Um, and it's a really good example of a wood as a supporting act and showing all those other woody notes around it. Um, which I think is kind of like, kind of elevates it. You know, it's got the patchouli, it has the vetiver, it has got this kind of piney, woody, uh, sappy feel to it. Um, and obviously a lot of tobacco. Susie so says, it smells like a bit like a sexy dentist who's nipped out for a cigarette. I feel like Susie, that comment comes from experience. Alison says, wet, mossy smell and dries to old leather chair on skin, not my thing. Lovely description though. 
After shaving my granddad with cigar in hand, clears the sinuses. Yeah, absolutely it does. So in the group, Joanne said that she sprayed sea and smelled like a guy's football changing room. I mean, that's a vibe. I've dropped my strip. And that is a big vibe. That's a big mood. I'm, I'm here for that. Sophie said it was like being beside the river and the smell of weeds, stinging nettles and pipe smoke. Uh, Susan said it reminded her of her father, a hint of tobacco, some spices, a revamped Old Spice maybe, and that she thought it was from the 1970s. Um, George said it was bitter, green and spice with pine sap, bay leaf and wormwood. He called it dirty and a rugged landscape, a sun-heated pine forest, which I thought was really evocative. Gail called it earthy, peaty and medicinal. And Claire said it was very chairman of the board on the skin, which I totally agree with. Um, Mia says she's thinking of getting it for her dad. It smells of shaving foam, celery and herbs. C is very powerful, reminds me of my grandfather's perfume. I smell tobacco and mint. Lots of people getting kind of a medicinal vibe from this or like a camphor thing or a menthol thing. Interesting. Man says it's not an easy perfume to wear until it's been on the skin for about 30 minutes and then it calms down to something quite nice. Yeah, the dry down is quite lovely on this fragrance. The top notes are a little bit challenging, I will be honest. Uh, David says they give him flashes of the loose in a service station, specifically Heston. Dave, have a box. David Maloney, have a box. I enjoyed that. That was very funny. Um, interesting. Interesting thoughts on this one. So... It is quite something, isn't it? There's a massive whack of pine here. It's intensely green pine, like almost like the saturation and the colour of the pine has been turned up. It's spicy, it's green, it's herbal, it's leathery, it's a bit menthol-y. It's got that camphor vibe. Also has a bit of a dusty character, I think. And there's something aged about it, something vintage, and it's quite animalic, I think. There's a masculine, intimate character to this fragrance. It's, it has a proper chest drug, may I say. It's very Burt Reynolds on bearskin rug, if that makes sense to anybody and you get that reference. But that's that's very much, um, very much the vibe I get from this one. Debbie says, it smells like an opium den and don't ask her how she knows. Well, Debbie, we want to know now. You're going to have to tell us. We, we need to know. <laughs> Edward Woodward would not wear this. <laughs> this is so funny. Lots of people saying it. I, I think a lot of your dads or family members have worn this fragrance, I think. Okay. Shall we do a reveal of C? I'm going to grab my bottle. I'm going to do it subtly. Okay. So, fragrance C is Polo Eau de Toilette by Ralph Lauren. Or is it Lauren? I don't know. On Friends, she always used to say it was Lauren. Ralph Lauren. This was created by the perfumer Carlos Benign in 1978. Um, it's £45.90 for a 49 mil EDT, I think. It's a weird number, but it's a weird size. It's either 49 or 59 mil, I can't remember. Um, it's an eau de toilette, um, and that's it. It's polo. It's. I was surprised nobody guessed it. I was really surprised. I thought you would all say that you knew what this was. But there you go. It's core. It is, it's got power, this has. Pulsating with masculinity, this fragrance. Absolutely. Throbbing with masculinity. Um, I see Polo as the fragrance equivalent of a dad bod. Um, it's rugged, it's hairy chested masculine, and it really showcases that particular style of woody fragrances uh, that has ma that was massively popular in the 70s and 80s. Um, it's intense, rich, spicy and woody. Um, and in this box it shows how woody fragrances traverse the world of sheep and fougere because it's kind of really sitting on the edge of those two, two things. Blending notes of vetiver and patchouli with pine. So I think this was, that's an interesting point, Sophie, about saying it's preppy. I think this was preppy back in the day. Um, George never thought it was that colour. Yeah, interestingly, the green bottle heart masks how green the fragrance is on the inside. Um, who was it? Was it Pip that said that her father used to wear this? Oh, Mia said it. Yes, that's why it smells like my dad. He he actually used to wear this. There you go. Okay, brilliant. Thank you, Dave, for the correction on the pronunciation. <laughs> no wonder men stood on the edge of the dance floor if they were wearing that. Yeah, well, if they all got together and they're wearing this, there'd probably be some sort of olfactory Chernobyl. Polo Blue is so much better. Um, okay, so Lorraine. Lorraine. 
You thought it'd be a yellow brown color. <laughs> Interesting that they've put it in a green bottle with a green juice. I suppose it just intensifies the green of the bottle maybe. Uh, someone give Thomas a box for the dad bod comment. I can have a box for saying dad bod, but I think I should have it taken away for saying throbbing with masculinity. I think that's perhaps the line too far. So I think I've, I've lost my box. Why do they bother putting the dye in the juice? Well, I wonder if it's to make the green of the bottle more intense, I think maybe. Okay, now I'm just confused how, to, how I'm supposed to pronounce Ralph Lauren. Okay, you're all telling me different things. Um, okay. So surprised it's maintained death thought it would be something more niche. Interesting comment, Judy. And I think that's it's because um, actually niche fragrances kind of are more, are, are more challenging and more different and weird. And obviously I think they do pull from some historic stuff that we don't wear now because they can afford to be a little bit more not so worried about selling so much. You're all giving me boxes now. That's not how this works. I give the boxes, but I'm getting a box for saying olfactory Chernobyl and putting it in the live. Thank you. Does this confirm that the color is green and not blue? I think Phoebe, you're right. This does confirm that it is in fact green. Susie's right with the pronouncing. Okay, brilliant, brilliant. Rachel says, Hubs was right, smells like his dad because it's what he wears. Brilliant, he's, tell him all of the lovely things we've said. Um, brilliant. So that is Fragrance C. Now, if Fragrance C was a hairy chested man, which I think we can all agree he is, specifically which hairy chested man would it be? They don't have to be famous. If you know someone down the street, I don't know, called Barry, who's got quite a hairy chest and you think he, that's who this reminds you of, then it can be Barry. It doesn't have to be Sean Connery. Hasselhoff. I like that. I like that Hasselhoff was the first one. Tom Selleck, Tom Jones. It's very Tom Jones, isn't it? Almost, almost felt myself do a Tom Jones impression there and stopped because Essential is a Welsh company. And I think if I did a Welsh accent, I'd be very quickly sacked. Nick says it's Barry down the street. Oh, Nick, that's interesting. Really, you know Barry too. I won't ask how you know Barry, Nick. Hi, Nick, by the way. Nice to see you. Rapsy Nesbitt, Ron Jeremy, Dave. Dave, Dave, Dave. Dave, Dave, Dave. Dave, Dave, Dave. Poirot. Fun, no, I'm not gonna tell that story about Poirot actually. That's, no, I'll, I won't tell it. I will tell it. I used to work in a call center and we used to sell books. And um, one of the books was a, a, a Hercule Poirot novel. And the person next to me had never heard of it and called him Hercule Poirot, which I just thought was really, really funny, but it's not relevant to this. Um, there you go. There you go. Um, Alan Partridge. Oh my God. This is my favorite question so far. Phil Mitchell, all of the Bee Gees, not just one of the Bee Gees, every single one of the Bee Gees together. What do you call like a collective of Bee Gees? Rob Lowe, because it's preppy and not old enough to have been there. One with a very hairy back. Max from EastEnders. You're all going for sort of very rugged men. I think that's what we're sensing. Ron Burgundy. Okay, let's move on. Let's go. Let's move on to D. Comments are a little bit delayed for me. I apologize so if I do just kind of not read them at the right time. I think they do come through a little bit later for me. Right, so we've got one more to do. We've got Fragrance D. I'm gonna spray this from the bottle. So what do we think of D? A BG, a BG, a bulge of BGs. <sighs> Claire, 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 a bulge of BGs. It's brilliant, it's brilliant, it's brilliant. I'm sorry, Claire's getting a box for a bulge of Bee Gees. I'm sorry. Sorry, Claire, please DM Essential. I think I've given out four now, Chelsea, I think. A Bee Jam, a heebie Bee Gees, a night fever of Bee Gees. This is brilliant. I love how this has nothing to do with perfume, but it's brilliant. I love it. Probably expensive. One Lonely Lisa Justice loves D. She's a big fan of Fragrance D. 
Nafia also loved D. Brilliant. We're 120 people, by the way, guys. We're 120. We did it. Celine likes D. I like D. George loves, loves, loves D. Teresa says a bit incense, like, really grew on me. Hmm. Interesting. So what do we think of D? Well, D is an iconic fragrance. Um, perhaps one of the most famous woody fragrances there are, if not the most famous, and it was revolutionary for being the first woody fragrance aimed at women. So it is a feminine woody fragrance. And it pairs fruity notes with a high dose of cedar wood, about 60%, to create a unique woody signature. So the fruit note here is plum and it contrasts that spicy, almost sweaty scent of cedar to make something plusher. But to me, it's actually quite austere and standoffish. It's very angular and sharp, a very a little bit unforgiving, but fascinating at the same time. Lots of people mention church incense vibe, which I think is interesting. Incensey church incense, it's refined, tantalizing, unexpected, and can't pick out any notes. Gavin loved this one. It was his favorite, it lasted hours on him. Brilliant, boozy and fruity too. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Nafia in the group said it was an immediate, had an immediate Coca-Cola note, saying it was effervescent and sparkly with dried jammy fruit, soft and smooth. Totally get that Coca-Cola thing. It's kind of that kind of fruity, spicy thing. Jordan called it a wonderful surprise, saying it was a gorgeous, fruity, sweet fragrance that was unisex and great for warm weather. And Lucy said it smelled more fruity than woody, but she loved it. Laura called it masculine with grassy green and spices. And Sophie said fizzy cherry cola. Sarah said, on first sniff, you smell like a truck driver after a long shift in 80 degree heat who's eaten a madras and drunk a ginger beer. I love that. Very, very specific. I am drinking a ginger beer, but I would just like you to know I haven't been driving a truck and this has not been a very long shift for me. And it's cold outside, just to clarify that. And I didn't have a madras for dinner. Lynn saying she hope it's not expensive. George is purple, plummy, moody. Uh, Trudy said, oh, I was going to say plum. Okay, good, good. And Denise is very sweet, most feminine so far. Spices and woods, boozy. Uh, hoping it's not expensive. There's something utterly familiar about it. Someone in work asked what the strange smell was today. Sorry, I'm going to get sacked for doing these boxes. We cannot allow that. Um, bath bombs from Lush, interesting. So it does have that fizzy cola vibe. It definitely smells like cola in the uh, opening notes. But there's also a very nice sharpness to it. The wood's quite sharp. There's an intimate spice. It's a little bit sweaty. It smells like warm skin, but it's also quite transparent. I don't think it's heavy or oppressive. The color is definitely purple because you get that really nice, like soft sort of color of purple. It's not vivid purple because of the richness of the plum in it. It's juicy, but not overly so. It's kind of like the skin of fruit, really, I think, rather than actually like the flesh. Um, and there's a solidness to it, but also a powdery quality of cedar. So, do you want to know what it is? Do you want me to put you out of your misery? Let's do it. I'm gonna take a sip of my drink. This is the last reveal of the night. Plums and woods, Deborah. Plums and woods. Hmm. Hmm. Lots of interesting guesses. Lots of interesting guesses. Okay, this fragrance is. Feminite du Bois, the Eau de Parfum by Serge Lutens. Doesn't look like this now. This is my very old, well-loved bottle. Looks slightly different. It's got a nice black label on it now. Um, this was created in 1992 by Pierre Bourdin and Christopher Sheldrake um, and actually relaunched in 2009. Um, it is 99 pounds for a 50 ml Eau de Parfum. Um, this was actually originally launched as a Shiseido fragrance in 1992 under the creative direction of Serge Lutens. He's a famous uh, makeup artist and photographer. Um, and when it launched in 1992, it was revolutionary. It didn't last on the market for a huge amount of time because it is quite unique. Um, and then it made its way uh, in 2009, I think, into Serge Lutens' own brand. And it was reformulated and relaunched. And it is quite different from the original version of this fragrance, which was a bit more powerful, a bit more intense. Um, Actually, Serge Lutens has been quite, uh, quite, quite through a bois period, bois being French for wood. Uh, he had Feminité du Bois, which was the starting point, but he also explored the world, world of woods in other fragrances such as Bois et Fruit, Bois de Violet, Violette, uh, Bois et Musque, and Bois Oriental. He's done all sorts of woody fragrances, kind of playing on this theme of fruits and woods. And he's, he's long explored the idea of femininity in woods through the use of fruit and flowers. 
Um, and I think this just really represents the sharp elfin figures that he used to create with his makeup art and all his photography. It's very much his style. And yes, I was ignoring all of your comments when you were all going, surely it's Feminite Dubois. Well, yes, it was. Well done. 1992 was my favourite year. I love 1992 too. 1992 too. My little brother was not born in 1992 and Madonna released her erotica album in 1992, which is my favourite Madonna album. Just there you go. Out of interest. I think it's a good year. Um, Pierre, Pierre Baudin made, um, do you say Dolce Vita too? Yeah, he did. So he kind of took that into the Dior Dolce Vita, is it similar? We love Uncle Serge, we do. We do love Uncle Serge. He does love to, he loves a riddle, does Uncle Serge. Susie says Serge and Fleur d'Oranger is her favourite Serge. I love Fleur d'Oranger, Susie. Love, 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 love. Um, also love Saracens and Two Rose Criminal from Serge Lutens. I tend to love Serge Lutens' florals more than anything else. He does a lot of these woody, stewed, fruity things. This is my favourite um, of those, but I love his florals. Susan, you don't, you don't have to be an aficionado. You don't have to feel bad. You, you can enjoy and you're learning about these fragrances as we go. And that's the important thing. They all get better over time, Pip. I do agree. You do have to really get them. I think woods need the warmth of the skin. I think you have to wear them. Gavin's little brother was born in 1969. You feel ancient. Well, sorry. <laughs> I don't think he recycled the formula in Afia, but I think he definitely extended the formula elsewhere. But then he, um, I'm, I'm sure he did, he did similar stuff with cool water and green Irish tweed, I think. Uh, you saw Madonna in concert in 1992, I'm jealous. Jealous. Um, now you're all telling me when your your children, your siblings were born. Um, Aline Lasbas de Soir. Is that the, like, stocking, silk stocking ones? I remember that, I like that. Mia says, I really might, might be this one, it's re-buy this one, it's been a long time since I've worn it. Also reminds me of YSL New. I love YSL New. It's such a beautiful fragrance. Love the bitchy cool of La Fille de Berlin. Why does this one disappear so fast? It's a really good question, uh, Crystal. I think possibly it's just it's it just it's just the way that it's made that it's actually quite a soft fragrance. Um, it's not particularly citrusy, so it's not not because of that. It's probably just because it's a, a very subtle fragrance. I think they've made the materials that they've used. They've not used many. A lot of woody fragrances now use a lot of like woody amber aroma chemicals that keep things lasting a very long time, but sometimes they're a bit foghornish, so you lose some nuance. And I don't think they're using their, that in this fragrance because I want the subtleties and the nuance to come out. So it's it's not the world's longest lasting fragrance or the world's most present. It doesn't have a massive... Um... Pugsley is snoring, I apologize. Um, it doesn't have like the world's biggest siage, but I think it's, it's nicely done. I, I like the softness of it. I think that's part of it. Okay. If this was a spice, what spice would it be? Laura says she's jealous of anyone who's seen Madge Life. I've seen Madge Life four times, just let you know, four times. Not recently, but four times I've seen it. Oh, Sophie's reminds me of the D&G fragrances, the numbered ones. Yeah, from the Tarot collection. Was it Tarot? Is there a spray with a bottle? Yes. So Serge Lutens fragrances are slightly strange, um, and the bottle is very similar to this. It's just got a different label now. Is It comes with a little sort of screw cap that's circular, but it always comes with the sprayer as well. So you can just spray the, screw the sprayer in, pop the lid on, and you're good to go. So allspice or cinnamon, 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 lots of cinnamon. Pugsley's dreaming over there. I think he's chasing a ball or something. Turmeric. Interesting. Coriander. Hmm. I think also what I will say about this fragrance is it works really, really well for summer. Because it's so... That spiciness works with the heat really, really well. Gavin needs a box. What does Gavin need a box for? I can't see a comment from Gavin. D 
Did Gavin say Posh Spice? I don't have that comment. Is that what Gavin said? Can someone confirm that to me? Did Gavin say Posh Spice? If you didn't, Gavin, now's the time just to cheekily type Posh Spice in. So I can see it. Mace? Cumin. Yes, Nikki, I definitely think cumin. I get that. Gavin said Posh Spice. Gavin, have a box for saying Posh Spice. You know the deal. I think you got a box last time. It doesn't matter. You can have a box this time. Well done, Gavin. Such a great shirt. Thank you very much. Okay, so I'm just going to do a quick recap. We had fragrance A, which was our very typically fresh, woody, modern, masculine fragrance, which was uh, Lode Issy Put On Wood and Wood. Um, and that one was, I'm just going to scroll back up on my notes so I've got the price. Um, that one was 40... I have got that far yet. 43 pounds for a 50 mil Eau de Parfum Intense. We then had Poe Santal, which was our lovely example of a fresh, clean, transparent, mineral, sandalwood, kind of creamy. And that's 85 pounds um, for 50 mil Eau de Parfum. Then we had our brutish, hairy chested, um, you know, piney fragrance that also had uh, patchouli and vetiver which was um, the wonderful um, Polo by Ralph Lauren. Um, and that one was £45 for a 49ml Eau de Toilette. And then we ended on Feminite du Bois by Serge Lutens, which is £99 for 50ml Eau de Parfum. Wonderful, fruity, feminine woods. Absolutely gorgeous. Don't worry if you've not got the names written down or anything. We will make sure you're all aware of what they are, we'll post them in the group, there'll be an email, we'll make sure everybody can see what the fragrances were. So please don't worry about that. You'll be able to find exactly what they are with links to them. Um, that does conclude this evening. How have I done for time? Obviously it's now past nine o'clock. I spoke for over an hour. Well done me. Um, keep talking in the group. We're obviously going to be doing um, our next reveal on the 27th of May at 8 p.m. So we've got a little bit of time before that. Keep discussing them. If you have any more thoughts on these fragrances, then share. If you do buy some, I love to see what you've bought and why. So please do take photos of those. If you've bought them, I'm really excited to see what you get or what you're saving up for, um, what you've really enjoyed, if any of these were surprises. Um, the June box is still on sale for currently. That's our new launches. So that will be on sale until the 30th of May. And then after that, it will be dispatched very early May, I think, around the 4th, I think. I could be wrong, but that's the date I think it is. So keep interacting. Keep lots of lots of pictures. Do what you do. You guys are awesome. Um, this has been brilliant. Thank you so much for entertaining me and being wonderful. And I'm going to see you all very soon. Have a nice evening, everyone. Bye.